Hello everyone and welcome to session 4 of course material 101 via MATLAB. I'm Arash and in today's session we wanted to talk about random Gaussian structures. Uh, so this is a very simple way to make a value representative course material image um, using Gaussian filters and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty much simple in order to do that. Uh, we just need a bunch of random numbers. So right now consider that we want a structure with uh, the size of 100 cube, okay? And then we make this matrix A equal to rand of S. So if you run this command, it will create for you a 100 cube random values between 1 and 0. So if you wanted to see how does this value look like, you can use this command. Okay, so as you can see, this is the distribution of those values between 0 and 1, and they're equally distributed inside this range okay so in order to first visualize this structure we are using a function that we have developed in session 2 so if we use surf a you will see that these are pretty much random values inside this image changing between 0 to 1 like this okay but now let's use a Gaussian filter. So we will say A is equal to in Gauss filter 3 of A and with a standard deviation of 1. Okay, if you do this, you will see that the image would be much more smooth like this. And then if you take out some of the values of this image, for example, if you say a is equal to a greater than 0.5, you'll come up with this simple proof media, which can be used for several modeling and simulation purposes. So if you increase this standard deviation value, you will see that you're creating larger poles and larger grains like this. Okay, yeah, looks like this. Okay, so um, this is it. One point is that this Gaussian filter is a bit tricky at the boundaries, so you need to take care of the boundaries because you may have uh, had a bit of a problem with porosity increasing at the boundary. So, in order to avoid that i will recommend to use replicate padding okay so we can use this command to do replicate padding and it will actually replicate the values at the boundaries and assume that there are same structures repeating beyond the boundary limitations. So it is some sort of boundary handling thing. You don't need to be worried about it, but I recommend to use this thing. If you don't use it, you will have a higher porosity at the surfaces, which is not favorable for you if you wanted a homogeneous structure of porous material. Okay, so let's see how we can control the porosity of this. The structure so there's a command inside MATLAB known as quantile which gives you the exact quantile of a structure so of an array okay if we wanted the quantile of a and 0.9 Let's see. 
Yes, because A is a logical thing. Okay, so if we do it like this, yeah, you will see 0.6 quantile is equal to 5 out of 5. So using this value, you are able to control the porosity. So for example, assume that we wanted the porosity to be equal to um, 0.2. So if we use pro here, let's see what the value is. 0.49. And here we can say that A is larger than this that from that quantile value. So using this you can see that we are almost having a porosity of twenty percent. If you decrease it for example to ten percent, you will come up with a more tight image of porous material. Okay, so right now, for example, if we change this value to a smaller one, yeah, this is it. So we have developed a function that calculates the specific surface of a porous material in session three, and we have converted this to this neat function. And if we also wanted to use that specific surface, calculator there yeah it will gives us also the specific surface of the solid space so as you can see is 0.7 and if we for example make the pore spaces smaller you see that the specific surface is increasing yeah and if you also look at the image, you see that probably these tiny polar spaces, they have a higher specific surface, which totally makes sense. Thank you very much for watching this session. Yeah, that was it. Making this random Gaussian structures and calculate the specific surface of it. You can manipulate these values, this sum of deviation to come up with different sizes and textures, and even you can merge two different Gaussian fields to see how the results would look like. It will probably give you more complicated structures, but it's a very good method to generate some data to work, you know, work with inside your other sort of simulation codes and something like that. Thank you very much, everybody, and goodbye.